Okay, so we did the Bridgeport video. Uh, I want to do a LeBlanc service video now. Sorry these videos are so long, I just can't figure out a way to, to uh, shorten them up and still get everything in the video. But this here is a 15 by 54 gear head, 7C, a little bit of an older model, but a really nice machine, a really good core condition, but you can see it's just, it's filthy. The uh, ways are all dirty and everything, so um, this is going to be a video of what happens to a, a lathe, a LeBlanc is what we work on here, what I work on here, uh, when we service it. So I already took the, uh, I already took a few components apart. I'll show that in the video here coming up, and then I thought, oh, you know what, I should do a video of this. So it's kind of partially disassembled, but we'll start from here. I hope you like it. Okay, so a quick overview. The electrical system on this one is an absolute disaster box is sitting on top. There's some kind of weird disbursement panel in the back, probably a shop that needed to have certain regulations, so they had to build some sort of weird panel. So we'll take care of that. Uh, it's an L0 chuck mount, and it came with some tooling, but not much, so I'll have to tool it out. I already did add some tooling to it, like a four jaw and stuff like that. Um, you can see here that it looked clean when I bought it from the dealer that I bought it from, but you can see underneath the ways, it's just, it's filthy. And you can clean that and go back and forth and get it kind of clean, but you, it just, it has to come apart. Otherwise you end up with all this crud inside of the machine and it, and it just, I don't know, I can't sleep at night knowing it's in there. So um, anyway, and then and all, the, all, the little, all the little oil zerts or whatever the heck you call those um, need replaced. They're all dented up and nasty. There's a bunch of dirt inside of them. So just a quick, again, just a quick overview. I think I already mentioned, I disassembled some of the components off of here. Here they are over here, taper attachment, compound, uh, cross slide screw, stuff like that. So as we go, same thing with the bridge port. Um, I'll kind of show you what I find and, uh, and show you what I do to a service to LeBlanc from Machine Tools Rebuilt. A couple of quick notes before we get too far. Started stripping this machine down today and um, just a couple of things to look for on these LeBlancs. I know I've posted a video a long time ago um, in the past about some gearing, but here's, here's, another, here's another issue. Um, the timing belt pulley on these LeBlancs was only fixed with a key and then a snap ring. There was no like compression fitting or there was no like uh, a th threading to hold it down or anything like that, like the drive shaft. And so the problem is, is that um, since it's not fixed as tight as it could be with some other sort of um, some other sort of engineering, it, it wobbles out and gets worn out. So you can see, um, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but the pulley is turning and the shaft is not until it engages at a certain point. So there's two problems here. One, obviously over time that's going to beat around the shaft and make the shaft smaller and, and the pulley inside diameter bigger and then you're going to have a, a big issue. And then two, the key is going to uh, get worn out. So sometimes you can replace the key and that fixes the problem. But if but if you're more than just a thou or two worn inside the pulley, now everything's gotta be replaced. And um, I've even seen guys weld this, this pulley to this shaft. I've gotten machines in where it's welded and then it's impossible to even take apart. You gotta grind it off, which is ridiculous. Best, best fix always for this stuff is new parts. People think they're gonna save money by trying to like, put a bushing in there or something like that. And you can do that. And sometimes I even do it depending on the situation, depending on the machine. But the best scenario is alleviate yourself the headache, buy new parts, or buy a machine from Machine Tools Rebuilt and you won't have to worry about any of this. And uh, another thing on this particular machine, I opened it up and right away I saw all the timing belt teeth. There they are. And so you can either put these in a jar and save them or something like that. But, uh, you're gonna probably have to replace that belt because that's not doing much. So just another, just another service point that needs to be addressed on these LeBlancs that we address on every one before they go out. Now this machine was fully functional from a dealer on the East Coast and, um, and it did function. Now I already showed you guys a moment ago about the timing belt issue, but also electrically. Look at what we got going on here. So here's, Here's a breakout panel, the original breakout panel. And then we have this. Now I don't know where they mounted this, maybe to the wall or something, but it came in on top of the machine. I had no idea that it wasn't attached. It was sitting behind the machine when they test ran it for me. And um, 
And so that's what we got going on in here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to eliminate this box, eliminate this box, eliminate everything on the front except for the barrel switch. We're gonna install a Mitsubishi D-Series VFD that's gonna control our motor. We're gonna eliminate the brake and we're gonna use dynamic braking through the VFD. And then I may keep this box on the front and install a coolant switch which we will have to put in that old breakout box after we eliminate all the stuff inside of it we'll put a little contactor in there with some control voltage and we'll uh, use this front box here for a coolant switch and i was thinking about a jog feature too where you push it and it just jogs the vfd for a moment um, and it would be nice because it'd be right here by your threading and then that way if you can't get your threading in gear and you don't want to kick the actual spindle on to uh, get it in gear, you can just push that little jog button that will be right here, and then that'll allow you to um, oscillate the spindle and put it in gear. So we may do that, we'll see what happens, but uh, stay tuned. Another thing to service on these geared head Leblons, as well as the servo shifts, when they're falling out of gear, a lot of the times this uh, This, this right here is your detent. Sorry about my big dirty fingers. But this right here um, detents on these little notches. And um, there's a spring, if you can see right down in there, there's a spring that holds these two arms together at the bottom. And, um, and it puts pressure on those detent notches. And what happens is, is since they're plastic, they can crack. And you can see, if you look real close right there, um, it's cracked. And so every single time we bring a LeBlanc in, um, nine times out of 10, one or both of them are cracked. So those need replaced. Because what'll happen is, is when that cracks, this piece completely falls off and then there's nothing keeping it in gear. So it'll slip out of gear if it wants to if there's any force in any direction other than right where it sits, um, it'll slip out of gear and your headstock gears will bang together um, or slip out and try to, try to mesh into the next one and it'll destroy your headstock. So just another thing that's serviced and if you're doing this yourself, um, you need to make sure that those are in good condition before you start running the machine. Let's talk about the apron and the saddle. So in the past, my service jobs, um, the decision to take the saddle off of the apron was governed by whether or not I was getting oil penetration to um, the ports on the saddle. So there's a port, um, it's kind of hard to see in this video. I'm so sorry about the quality of these videos. There's a port right there. You can see, kinda. I'll zoom in a little bit. That port right there. And there's a port on this side, similar to it, right there. Also, there's this copper pipe that goes and feeds the back way, this way here and there's um, a port that comes out of that hole right there and then there's also a port that feeds the front way underneath so what i would do is, is i would pump i would pump the uh the oiler and if i was getting good oil penetration on all of those ports i would leave it assembled but the problem is is that uh, a lot of the times there's just so much garbage underneath the ways that um it, it just needs to come apart. And in addition to that, the oiler for the half nut, you can see here, um, you can see all the grime in the top of the half nut. So there's your, there's your half nut right there that rides on your lead screw for threading. And this copper pipe here is supposed to feed a hole that's somewhere embedded in all of that grime. So, so from now on, um, well, from about two months ago on, all of my LeBlanc service jobs will have the apron detached from the saddle. The saddle will be taken off and flipped over 
completely cleaned out. The oil lines will be blown out and then it'll be reassembled after I clean the best I can, the top of the half nut and whatever's back here. Uh, again, the best I can from this position. Now the apron will not come off of the screws unless it absolutely needs to for some sort of repair. On a rebuild it would, but not on a service job. But, but again, um, the extent to which I'm going on these service jobs, many people would probably call a rebuild, but I just feel uncomfortable calling it that because a rebuild to me is top to bottom brand new. So that describes the work done to the apron and to the saddle. So like I said before, I was not getting oil to all the ports. The two main ways we're getting oil, everything else was getting oil, but these side, these uh, cross slide ports were not getting oil. And they were so plugged up with debris, um, not even compressed air would, uh, would blow it out when I pushed the air through the, through the main port. So what I had to do was, um, when, when they drill those holes for oil, they come in from the side and then they come in from the bottom right here and then those holes intersect and then they plug them with these little plugs. So what I had to do was, is drill the center of this plug out um, and then blow air through here with, with, plug, with my finger um, over the other hole to get, to get it to blow out. And then I ground a little, uh, a little pick and got it in there. And finally, um, after a few minutes of air being in it, it blew both of them out. Then I uh, taper reamed the holes and then I put taper pins back in them and then cut them off with an abrasive cutoff wheel. And so now, um, now the oil's penetrating. So uh, this is an example, you know, when somebody finds a deal and they think, oh, this is great. You know, they uh, get a machine for four, 4,000, 3,000, something like that. One little issue like this, which they all almost have this issue where the oil's not penetrating. I'd say probably seven out of 10, um, the oil's not coming out of the ports when you buy a used, uh, used LeBlanc like this. And um, just something like this requires a, a huge disassembly process, a lot of time and effort. So uh, just another reason to buy a service machine from us rather than finding one online somewhere at an auction or something like that. We finished up day one by reinstalling the apron. Now it's all cleaned out and um, we got oil going to the half nut. We got the back side of the apron blown off as best we could from where it was. We got the oil system working on the saddle. We got the cross slide cleaned up, reinstalled. Compound cleaned up, reinstalled with new oil fittings, new wipers. Everything's cleaned up. Took the, uh, took the travadial off because it was broken. The tail stock, the spindle came out, got cleaned. The, uh, it got backed off of the ways, the bottom cleaned, blown out through these ports to make sure oil's getting to where it needs to go. New wipers, steady rest got cleaned out. Today, day two, we're gonna go as far as we can on the headstock, but we're still waiting on a VFD and we're still waiting on the timing belt. Then if you'll come over here with me, of course you don't really have a choice if you're watching this. Today, we're also going to service the taper attachment. This was a fully functional, quote, machine from a, uh, from a dealer again. And um, I don't know, you tell me. So uh, we're gonna get this taken apart, cleaned up, reinstalled, and uh, and then we're gonna go from there. So something to consider. Um, I I purchased this machine for four thousand dollars, and um, again it was deemed fully functional. And not only was it filthy, um, and the oiler wasn't working, and all these other things, but the timing belt, all the gear, uh, all the teeth on the timing belt were stripped off. So I mean. You couldn't even use this machine if you wanted to. So you got to ask yourself, um, are the services that I'm providing, namely all of the um, actual service work that goes into the machine prior to its departure to your shop, the six month parts warranty on all service LeBlancs and bridge ports, and all of the tooling that comes with the machine. Because remember when I bought the machine, all it came with was one uh, six jaw buck chuck didn't even have the opposite side jaws. So now we have large capacity, original steady rest. We have four jaw, tool post, Jacob's chuck, live center, um, a whole bunch of stuff. So the increase in price is offset by not only the service, but also the warranty and the tooling. So you gotta just kind of ask yourself, is that worth it? Or are you the kind of person that wants to frustratedly, if that's a word, 
mess around with the machine's quirks and try to get your own tooling to save a few bucks. Taper attachment all cleaned up and back together. Everything on the cross slide compound is finished except for the guard, the cover plate, the little hinged cover plate. I had to get another one because the, the previous one was, uh, was cracked. So coolant system, working on that now. Um, there were some chips in the, <laughs> in the drain, so that wouldn't have drained well. Plus, the, there's about two inches of sludge in the bottom of the coolant tank. So that's gonna all get cleaned out. Um, we got the coolant uh, spigot all cleaned up with a new piece of lock line, new hose. So coolant's going to be ready to roll. Got the coolant tank all cleaned out and the line all flushed out, the pump flushed out. So basically I just get in there, scrape it all clean, and then fill it up with degreaser and uh, pump it through the pump. Then I vacuum it all out, fill it up with degreaser, again, do the same thing, and then I flush it twice with water. And uh, then you should be ready for coolant without a bunch of debris in it. So the coolant system's all cleaned out now, and uh, we're gonna move on to the headstock, finish it up. So I did end up deciding to um, put a bushing, re-sleeve this pulley. It was about three or four thousandths out, and it was just, it was too much. I kept thinking about it as I went it back together, and. It ran okay, but I think this is a, a better fix. So the shaft is in good condition, but the pulley was a little bit wobbled out. And so the way to do this, the only way to do it, is to bore it out to a minimum of inch and three quarters so you're past the key, press fit like a two thousandths press piece of cold roll, inch and three quarter into the center. You can see where I pressed it in, kinda. You can see that seam around here. Once you press it in, then you bore it, um, you got to make sure you take these these little wings off. These little belt keepers don't. Uh, you don't want to hold on to that because it'll come off. So you you take those off. You um, you bore it, then you rekey it inside the material that you put in there, and then the press fit is tight enough. I mean, it, a two thousandths press is plenty tight enough for the torque on this. However, um, to ensure it not slipping, you drill a quarter twenty hole, half in the bushing and half in the pulley and then you put a set screw in there, lock tight a set screw in there, and that is a really clean, really good fix um, to this issue. Plus, you could always press that bushing out if it ever happens again. So, that's a proper fix. So here we have the electrical system that I was talking about. We retained a contactor for coolant. We have control voltage to control the contactor. Everything's labeled out on this strip I used at the bottom. It's a little crowded, but you can still get to everything, and the panel's original, which is kind of nice. We have a Mitsubishi D700 VFD. You can run it on single phase if you'd like. And then a little start-stop switch on the side there. Uh, if you come around to the front here, you see we have that jog button that we talked about to make it easier to mesh the gears in when they're not going in. You have to oscillate the spindle. You can do it right there, and it's right down by your feed, which is kind of nice. And then you have the coolant switch here. And then the handle, the on-off handle, um, works just the same as it did when it was manual. Only now it runs through the VFD, through the I.O. board on the VFD. So hopefully that was a good description of what happens to a LeBlanc when it's serviced here at Machine Tools Rebuilt. And uh, if you have any questions or you want to buy this machine, which you probably do, you should get a hold of me at John, J-O-N, no H, John at MachineToolsRebuilt.com or you can visit us at machinetoolsrebuilt.com. So send me an email or a, or a contact request. Love to talk to you about the machines we have to offer. Hope you liked the video, thanks.